All right, Q and A. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys, and I guess I'll take some questions for a little bit. Yeah. So we've got this uh, rad cube that we've never used before. So we're gonna try to not let anybody get hurt with this thing. Uh, but yeah, raise your hand. Chuck will call on you, and we'll get this thing to you as gently as possible. Ready? Ready. Can you hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned like um, one of the things you kind of do when you're going through your process is getting people to look twice. What other kind of like tenants do you have with your work um, along those lines? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, yeah, so I think having people look twice and kind of question what's in the image is really important. Um, I think, like for me personally, it's just growing. I mean, I don't want to keep being like the rainbow color guy. Like, I I appreciate and laugh at the Lisa Frank comparisons. That's fine, um, <laughs> but like, I don't want to get stuck there. And I think like my taste is really like you know a lot of your taste in your adulthood develops from your teenage years. And like, I grew up on hardcore and punk rock music, and I don't really get a chance to like show that aesthetic off a lot of times because it's just not sort of the career and the body of work I've built. Um, so, but I'm still drawn to that. That's still like what I feel like kind of a kinship with and what I want to um, do more of. So I think finding ways to push, you know, every project I do, even if it's like in a really small way that only I notice, um, you know, helps me to know that I'm evolving and not just kind of stuck doing the same thing I did when I was 18. And I still appreciate that work and I still am, ha like if a client, for example, comes to me and references something I did when I was 19, you know, here 14 years later, I don't ever like turn my nose up at that and say, oh, I don't really do that anymore. I try and think like, you know, be a good interpreter for the client and figure out what it is that they like in that and how can I do it in a way now that really resonates with me and makes me happy but also kind of gives them what they're looking for. So yeah, I would say like evolution is really important even if it's something only I notice. Just making sure that I'm growing and, um, you know, not getting stuck um, being like the light street color guy, you know what I mean? Um, and I'm fine with that. It really was like kind of the foundation of my career and when things started kind of happening and clients took notice but um, yeah, I just don't want to do the same thing over and over again, but I'm okay with slow growth too. Like, that's fine that I just kind of develop, you know, new things over time, so. I'm going to take a photo of this cube okay, okay. afterwards, but I'm going to listen. I just, so I kind of have to make up a question, but, uh, <laughs> awesome. All right. uh, but, uh, in line with what you were just mentioning. Uh, what's your reaction and response then with kind of like with the iPhone and with everybody kind of feeling like everybody's a photographer, mm -hmm. everybody's a designer, everybody's a web designer. Yeah. What What's your next step in in a way of reacting to that so you can stay ahead of the curve, mm. if that makes sense? I don't really think about that too much. I'm happy for people to have these this access to, to tools. I think that's really important. Um, I would have killed when I was 18 to have had this platform, you know, this place to come and watch a speaker. Um, and I was lucky enough to get invited and, and go be a part of some of those things. Um, but man, like when I think about like when I started off, when I was you know in 2003, I was just lucky that I found a couple of design forums and like message boards because I need you know, in the suburbs in your parents' basement, like you need some kind of community still and a way to talk to people like we do now, in our work and in our you know in our communities here. Um, and I would have killed to have social media back then and just to have like a big you know platform to share your work anytime you wanted to, but. I really had to rely on um, like a lot of design news websites to like get the work out there. Um, so as far as the tools and having everyone be a photographer, um, I, like I just think it's great. Like I, I think it's I think it's good that um, a, you know a 10, 11 year old. I think there's probably toxic things we don't really understand yet in terms of being like glued to your phone all the time. And God knows I am, but um, I think it's great that there's easier access to more people at younger ages for creativity. Um, so I think, I don't think I really, like right at this point in my life, I didn't mention this to you, I'm, I work as the uh, full time as the group creative director at MKTG here in Chicago and then I continue also running No Pattern. Um, and so I see a lot of what I do at this point in my career as like a mentoring and, and teaching and paying forward what a lot of people helped me with early on. So, you know, I think more people calling themselves a photographer, I mean, I'm not going to stand up here and say anything about um, that being a, a bad thing. So, um, yeah, no, I think it's good. And to stay ahead of the curve, I just keep doing what I'm doing and try and be happy and content in life, but also try to, like I said before, evolve and do things that make me happy. And then hopefully other people, you know, enjoy them too. So. It's a very democratic answer, but that's really how I feel. I think it's really good that 
I just think it's really cool when I see like young kids getting so excited about doing creative stuff. So, I've got to answer Heather's question. Okay. All right, I've got it for you. You ready? Do I just like to? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so you talked a little bit about how your, I would say, surreal or fluid process butts up against some of your corporate clients that you had. But is there ever a time? It seemed like everything worked out great with like Nike and mm -hmm. Bloomberg. Were there, t were there times where that your very fluid process did not go well or yeah, sure. clashed with very kind of corporate um, clients? You know, I, I wouldn't say anything's clashed because like, I think people see my work and they know what they're signing up for. I mean, I showed the most corporate possible version of my work with the Microsoft thing. Um, you know, and I think, I think we ever, like as freelancers especially, but if you work in an agency, I mean, like you have a responsibility to your client if you agree to do something with them in the beginning. Um, you have a responsibility to understand what you're agreeing to. And I think you have a responsibility to understand what you're signing up for. So I'm really careful about what I sign up for. Um, I'm careful about what I turn down, and I'm careful about like, how I go about things. So I've, I can't really think of any instances where I've been put in a position to do something that like, I just don't want to do uh, creatively. Because I think, again, like, they know what they're signing up for. A lot of times they'll reference other work of mine. And, um, but, I mean, yeah, I have so many stories about things not going well or going astray in the project or me screwing something up and kind of losing sight of what I needed to do. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, you know, you get up here, it's like social media, you get up and you show the best of the best and everyone thinks everything's perfect, and it's definitely not. Um, but there's, yeah, there's plenty of situations where I've been at odds maybe creatively, but I do think for the most part I've been pretty intentional about the way I go about, you know, setting the stage before the work begins and then showing enough along the way and having good milestones and being on time and getting your work to your client and making sure that they're pacing and tracking with you so that there aren't any big surprises. So um, yeah, so it's definitely like not a perfect thing and I could probably think of some instances where it's happened worse, but um, I think if, you're, if you try and be you know, smart about it ahead of time, you can usually avoid a lot of that stuff. Um, but if I think of another example though, I'll definitely, definitely let you know. It's a good question. What's your dream opportunity? Dream opportunity. I feel like I've gotten my dream opportunities. Um, I'm really content right now. Um, I'm not like I'm not. In, I had that like I'm hustling hard mode when I was like 18, 19 in my early 20s. Stay up late, get up early, work, 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 work. Like I just don't feel that right now, and I don't really think about like my dream project. I have dream collaborators, like other designers. I would love to do something with, even if it was like a small little thing. That makes me a lot happier right now. Um, my dr I actually read an interview I did. Um, with a guy, there's a guy named Benny who has a clothing line called Benny Gold uh, in San Francisco, and I did a project with him like six years ago, and he just announced that he was folding his company to move on to work at an agency, and um, I was going to reference an interview I did with him for something, and I just reread it back, and he asked me a, like a similar question, um, and I said I want to work with the Chicago Bulls, um, and that was in 2012, and I've been working with the Bulls now for the last four years, doing photography for them and helping them with their Instagram and. Um, kind of creative consulting, and, and um, I really made like a, a very purposeful push to get my foot in the door with them, um, and that was a dream of mine. Like as a child, I wanted to do work for, for the Bulls. You know, um, that was that was a goal, and I've, I've been doing that now. I've been lucky to do that. Um, so, I'm trying to think, I don't know. I, I've been I've been really fortunate. Um, so right now, my dream is kind of just like get a good night's sleep, play with my my kid have a chance to come talk to you guys and, and, and do things like this, but I'm not really thinking about like, what's next for me? Like, I just, I don't know. It just doesn't cross my mind right now. Um, probably, I, I do wanna, I wanna give you an answer to this. I'm not giving these like amorphous answers, like what a brand that I'd love to work with. I don't know, I'm not sure. I'll get back to you, let me think about it. Gotta have some of these answers prepared so you're not up here like, well, here's the thing. I'm trying to be like overly intellectual. I just don't, yeah, I'm just in like an interesting <laughs> spot in my life right now. <laughs> uh, there was an old piece of yours that you did for Absolute. Where's, who's talking? Me. Oh, hi. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, Absolute. And I, it was like 2004, I want to say. Yeah, like, before I was 21. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> what was your, I guess like what was the path in order to get to work for a client like that, like at that early? All right, I'm going to be real honest. A lot of these, like the, the Windows thing, working for Absolute, like it is literally getting a random ass email. Like that's it. <laughs> and it, like, I'm not part of some like staffing agency. I don't have a manager right now, like a, like a rep that's going. Inside. Like it was, I busted my ass to get my work out there. I made a goal. When I was 18, 19, 20, I started doing a ton of work for magazines. 
And at that time, I, one of my goals was to have work in five magazines on a shelf in a single month. Like, I wanted work in, like, every single magazine on the shelf. I would go to, rest in peace, I would go to Borders, and I would get a big stack of magazines. This is the story of how I started my career. It's a really important, it's a really important point, and it's a good question, because I'd go to Borders, I'd get a stack of magazines, I'd go to the masthead, I'd find the art director's name, I'd write it down. There was no LinkedIn, no social media at the time, and I would write it down, and I'd go home, and I would type up an email to introduce myself. Um, hey, Bob from, you know, ESPN Magazine. I uh, love your guys' magazine. I'd love to work together. And I would guess their email address. First name, last name combinations. First name dot last name. Last name underscore first name. First initial dot last name. And I'd send individual ones out to each one of those. And it's in like 20. And then I get 19 bounce backs, which means one went through. Um, that was literally how I got started. And I just did that until people responded and... I'd wake up and it was like Christmas morning. There'd be like 20 emails that said like, re, introduction. I'd be like, cool, what's in each one of these? And most of the time it was a no, but like with ESPN, they said yes and I got a project with them. So I just kept doing that and like saturating early in like 2003, four, five, like just because I wanted to get my work out there and I didn't have any backup plan. Um, and so stuff just kind of started coming. So that, that um, absolute thing came through this company in New York called Flavor Pill that does, it's like, they're kind of like thrillists, and they were working with Absolute, and they wanted me to make a couple wallpapers. They didn't ask if I was 21, probably totally illegal that I did that when I was 20 or 19, um, but I don't I mean, hey, if you don't want to ask, I'm not telling you. So. <laughs> no one's ever asked me if I have a degree, no one's ever asked me any of these questions that you think you're supposed to get asked. And I have the utmost respect for education in school. I think I missed out on a lot by not going to college. Um, but um, I was just like of the mindset of like, I gotta plow forward and like whatever it takes to like get my work out there. If someone wants to work with me, like let's talk. <laughs> um, so, so a lot of your work is, is very manipulated and layers and all that. How do you know when it's done? Yeah. Is it a uh, gut feeling? I'm getting better at it. Um, I, I'm better at it now at 33 than at 18 because I would just like tinker and I still do it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, I want to do so much to things, and it's hard for me to keep it simple. Um, but I've tried to use restraint and be a little more thoughtful with, like, you know, color is obviously important to my work. So I try and be a little more thoughtful with where I put color and how I introduce it to an image so that it's got a bigger impact um, as opposed to just, like, you know, flooding the whole thing, which was kind of more what I, I did starting out. So um, I don't know. You, you don't really know when it's done. You just It's a gut thing. You're just kind of... Or you're tired and you're like, I'm, I'm done. Like, that's that. <laughs> it's a different question if it's personal work or client work. Like, client work, they're done when, it's kind of done when they tell you it's done. Um, for your own work, it's sort of like when it wouldn't be made better when you add more and it would be made worse if you took anything away. And how you know that, I think it just comes with getting to know, like, your work more over time. Um, but, yeah. All right, we've got time for one more question. Anybody over here? Oh, come on, Cena. I really just wanted to hold the box. Um, as more and more of what we see online is the final product and the perfect image, uh -huh. um, do you have any advice for up and coming creatives on how to reconcile like their own process with their own work and not necessarily having it up to par with what they see online mm -hmm. and trying to find confidence in what they do, but also realizing it's not the end of the world if yeah. their images don't look like others. Yeah, I've been there for sure. I'll be real honest with you guys. Like I went through kind of like my Instagram phase where I was like, I need more followers. Like I need more likes. Like I got real, I mean, I would say like there was a point probably like five years ago, I would, yeah, like probably about five years ago, four years ago where um, like, it was just like, that was it. Like it was Instagram, it was like kind of, it's still a little bit Wild West. It wasn't that new at the time, but it just hit this like critical mass of like needing attention online and then like trying to do the next best thing all for, for, for what? Like I'd had, you know, in my, where I was coming from with my career, I'd already had the chance to work with, with clients. Like what was I doing this for? And it was just for other people, for who? For strangers. So, um, or you know, people that I like, but like now, honestly, like if I post something, I don't even post on Instagram that much. I post a lot of my story because I like the idea of sharing like kind of daily life and almost just like, here's what's on my camera roll right now. I think that's fun. It feels a little more natural. Um, but like, I'm more excited when like a handful of people that I'm close with like my, like my stuff. Like 
If I see my mom like my stuff, and I see some designer who I follow and who happens to follow me who I respect a lot, I'm like, cool, that's awesome. So, but I think it comes with time, and I think like we don't know what the effects of social media and like our need to sort of constantly compare ourselves to other people is quite yet. Um, we're just seeing it happen in such a concentrated way all at one time. Um, and so I think it's just something that you will grow out of. I really do. I think eventually you kind of shake that and you just focus on your work. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not super competitive. Like, I, like with, with in this field, like, I'm, I'm happy, you know, for, for people when they get opportunities. Um, but at the same time, there's, there's times when someone gets something, I'm like, man, that should have been me. And I know it should have been me. But, like, that's, how is that attitude, like, helping? So, um, I just think, uh, I don't know. I think it's something you have to go through. Like with Instagram right now, as you get, like, get into, a, into photography or you get into design and you post stuff, like you're always going to compare yourself to someone else. And I just think it's part of a growth process, and I think it's something that you have to go through and then eventually come out on the other side and realize like, kind of what's really important. Um, and hopefully you end up with some good lessons. But, you know, but it's fun. I mean, like seeing that little orange bubble pop up, like they know what they're doing. It's Facebook. I mean, you know, I mean they, 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 they've got us hooked, and um, all of us. So I think like making sure to keep some health be conscious of that, um, and, uh, but also look at people who are doing stuff, and, you know, and then figure out how to learn from it. Like, replicate it on your own. You know, you don't have to post it, but, like, I did a healthy amount of, like, learning by looking at other people's work and then try and figure out how to make it my own so it doesn't just be, like, this bite of some other person's work. But I just think it takes time and, and experience to sort of, like, get over that, that hump. Um, but it's something I think we all have to go through as creative people to kind of see the other side, so... I think that was the last question, so thank you guys. Appreciate it very much.